So today you're gonna see me take on my very first epoxy project and I love the way this came out. Now, I'm no expert at this, but what I do have is the basics of working with this product. So I'm kind of good to go now and I can definitely share some of the knowledge that I've picked up with you guys. But although my technique probably ain't where I want it to be right now, it's a start and I think that will get better over time. This is mainly a hands-on what I did to create this and you'll see every step I took to go from point A to point B, creating this entire piece. The epoxy part of this video was shot in class and I wanted to take this on without any help around me because when I got back to my garage, there will be no assistance. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I did to be able to create this. For each pour, you're gonna end up using two containers, a torch, and also some gloves. A plastic bin to elevate my work and I'm also going to use a piece of hardboard as the material. For the individual colors I'm going to use a few drinking cups. I'm also going to use white, two shades of blue, a little black and a little bit of gold. You'll also need some mixing sticks, alcohol in a spray bottle and also a brush or roller to spread the epoxy. And finally you need part A resin and part B hardener. All right, so let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is pour six ounces of hardener. Then I'm gonna take the resin and pour that till I get to 12 ounces. So this is a one-to-one -one mix. Once you have both the resin and the hardener in the container, you'll then wanna take a mixing stick and mix that for five minutes. After five minutes of mixing, you're gonna pour that mix into a new container. And the reason for transferring to a new container is so that everything get mixed equally. Now I'm gonna add my base color, which is white. Then I'll mix this for four minutes. Now I can pour the epoxy right on top of the base. And I'm gonna use the brush to spread that out. The only thing to watch out for here is over brushing because you don't want to expose so much of your material from the bottom. You really want this to sit on top. Now with all the mixing and also the brushwork, you will accumulate some bubbles. A good way to get rid of them is using a torch. Now a rule of thumb is you want to keep the torch moving. And with the base laid down, I'm gonna mix some color. Following the steps I made earlier, I made another 12 ounce of epoxy mix. Then I pour about three ounces of that into each cup approximately. I then add my color and then mix that for an additional four minutes. So you only need a little bit of color, but I got a little heavy with the mix there. For the color, I have a total of three shades of blue. You can totally use any color you want, just add it to your epoxy mix. And you can add color by using a powder mix or a liquid mix. Now you do have some working time with the epoxy so you will have enough time to mix all of these and you don't have to mix these a total of four minutes each. Around four to five minutes all together should be fine. And at this point it's time to add the colors on top of the white base. So I was all pumped up to get started. I have all these cups in front of me and I'm like, what do I do next? Sometimes you just have to go. Like there is not a whole lot of explanation I can give you guys that can teach you as far as the technique here. Cause I think that's all based on experience and the things you're gonna pick up along the way as you find out what works and what doesn't works. To simplify what I'm doing here, I'm laying layers of epoxy and then I'm spreading them out. This is more of a freestyle because there isn't a clear vision on what I want. I'm spraying alcohol on the epoxy and what that's doing is it's causing the epoxy to separate from each other, giving it more of a natural look. So for me, I'm just creating layers on top of each other with the different paint and then I'm mixing them in with the brush and then I'll do different techniques and just trying different things and seeing what I can come up with that I like. This could look a little messy, but if you're working on plastic, this cleans up easy the next day. And even the colors that drip off, you can also pick that up and put it right back on top of your artwork. 
and again i'm just trying different techniques brand alcohol hitting it with the torch mixing it up just trying to get a different look until i get to that point where i'm satisfied with it i should have double checked the spray tip before i sprayed it on the painting because i wasn't quite happy with what i got out of it I did went on to add a little more color, still wasn't happy with it, so I then hit it with the torch to get the air bubbles out. Then I came back with the alcohol to then open up those colors a little more and feather the edges. After about 30 minutes, I came back with the mixing sticks and just cleaned off some of the drips. For this build, I'm going to use a battery powered LEDs with a remote to keep things simple. The frame has miter corner to keep things looking clean. So if you look at the end result, you'll notice that there's a separation from the art to the frame. So inside of the frame, there's a three quarter inch gap going around the entire thing. Behind the artwork, there's another frame that's elevating it. And this one is just a simple frame put together using pocket hole screws. Along with the miter corners, there's a rabbit router in the back section of the frame. And with this routed out, I'll then be able to sit the plywood down inside of this and keep everything flush. So we did a quick dry fit to make sure everything fit before moving on to the next thing. And that looked pretty good, so now it's time to address the inside frame. So I'll remove the corner from the inside frame, that way the LED can sit well. Now is a good time to sand down everything and get ready to put it all together. Since this is going to be painted white, I'm going to use wood glue and nails to secure this together. So wood glue was added to the smaller frame, then that was face down. We then took some blocks of wood that we used to center this piece up, put those into place and then place weight on top of it. I applied two coats of sprayed on white paint, then I finished that up by using one coat of polyacrylic. So I need to wrap the frame on the inside with the LED. And one thing to keep in mind is the connector need to land on the inside and long enough so that I can grab it and plug it and disconnect it from the battery pack. Once I determine how much I need, I then cut it off at the copper line. One thing to keep in mind if you're tackling the art frame like this is you don't want it in a dark spot. So don't cut the LED short or don't think that you're being wasteful by overlapping if you have to. These LEDs are peeling sticks, so they have adhesive on the back, but it all depends on the brand you use. Some of these peeling stick work so much better than the others. In this case, the one I have didn't work out so great, but I was able to use some hot glue later on and just kind of touch up some of the areas so that it didn't peel off. Now I could have cut this hole earlier, kind of glad I didn't because I probably would have cut a square hole and in this case I just used a 3 inch hole saw and just drilled the hole which was so much easier. My first thought was to use epoxy to secure the artwork to the frame but when you're dealing with electronics and lights and things like that those tends to fail over time so hot glue is strong enough but also weak enough to be able to pull off in the occasion you need to replace the LEDs. All you have to do now is just plug in that battery pack and you're basically ready to go. So at this point, yeah, that's just loose inside. I'm not going to secure it because that just make it easier to replace the battery. And yes, there's a way to secure that. You can use Velcro or some other kind of adhesive that would be easier to just detach so you can swap the battery. So this remote is radio frequency. All you have to do is just press the button. As long as you're in the vicinity, you don't have to point at anything and that works great. 
You can just select your favorite color. I like the blue one, think that makes the most sense. And since this is a wall art, I have to add some hardware and I'm gonna keep it simple by using these sawtooth hardware. So I had a blast working on this project and I did want to take the opportunity to expand outside of what I normally do. The product I'm using in this video is from Countertop Epoxy. This is the only thing I have experience with. I actually went out to their headquarters, they were super nice and I got some hands on training in the class that they were giving. And while I was there I asked them if they could help me out since I'm going to be using their product to you know give back to the audience and they said sure they can give 10% off and you can use DIY creators if you want to check out countertopepoxy.com I have a link down in the video description now this is not a sponsored video by no mean I just love what they're doing and I wanted to recommend the product that I'm actually using and that's about it for today so go ahead and do that fun stuff you know like comment and don't forget to subscribe. If you wanna see what I'm working on next, be sure that you check me out on Instagram, and that's instagram.com slash more DIY creators. I will catch you guys in the next one.